Hello there and welcome to this project demonstration video. In this video, we will be looking at my machine learning project. So my objective was to build a deep learning model capable of classifying the world's rarest butterfly, namely Palo Suertes Blue and the scientific name being Glycospike Lygdamus. So I started with the Leeds butterfly dataset on Kaggle and this dataset does not contain images of Palo Suertes Blue and I just started with it to build a working code yeah, so the image dataset comprises of 832 images in total and the distribution ranging from 55 to 100 images per category. And this dataset contains um, images from 10 different species. And yeah, so I did the code for, uh, I built a base model uh, that uh, deep neural network architecture that contained five convolutional um, layers and five max pooling layers. And the model gave a test accuracy of 88.23 percent and it uh, currently classified 15 out of the 17 total test images and the next objective was to include images from of palos verdes blue in our data set so i queried google with the query palos verdes blue and i downloaded images uh, from google and i copied those images to remove the background noise uh, reduce the background noise and yeah so these are the 72 images that I downloaded and yeah, I saved it in a folder called Glaucosvike Click Demos and then using our code we integrate this folder with the Leeds Butterfly dataset. And the Leeds Butterfly dataset, um, I just downloaded it automatically using code um, use, uh, that is provided by the Kaggle API in Python. So yeah, after integrating with the original dataset, the model gave a really good um, test accuracy and uh, it class currently classified 19 out of all um, a total 19 test images so yeah we had a working deep learning model that could classify um, that is capable of classifying the world's rarest butterfly namely palos this blue now the next step was to do a comparative study between different deep learning architectures neural network architectures to find the best classification model so yeah that was like version 2 of this project um, so like starting from version 0 where I did the Leeds Butterfly only for the Leeds Butterfly dataset then for including the folder for Palace for this blue and now uh, version 2 is the competitive study between um, 10 different neural network architectures yeah so the first one was our hand built base model uh, which had 5 convolutional layers and 5 max pooling layers the second one is VGG16 uh, applying transfer learning, um, VGG19 and then the mobile net um, architecture and so something that I found out after um, observing the performances of these different models were that mobile net performed extremely well compared to the other models so I decided to uh, do a competitive study, competitive study again between uh, the mobile net architecture with um, architectures with different amounts of fine tuning so yeah fine model mobile net architecture with fine tuning of one layer fine tuning of two layer up to five layers and then a completely fine tuned mobile net model yeah so <laughs> it's a pretty lengthy code um, and yeah oh okay so one other thing that i forgot to mention is that um, so we have 832 images uh, in the leads butterfly uh, date yeah, Leeds Butterfly dataset and I am adding an additional 72 images uh, but still the dataset is comparatively really small so I am applying data augmentation and data augmentation is a data analysis technique used to increase the size of our dataset by adding um, slightly modified images of our original images or newly created synthetic images from the original ones that were in the dataset. So yeah, uh, some of the parameters were like rotation range, um, then height shift range, then rescaling, horizontal flip, etc. Uh, that I had said. And yeah, so after running um, the code on all the 10 different neural network architectures, we finally uh, uh, can observe our graphs and evaluate the performance from the learning curve. So here we have accuracy versus epoch. Uh, validation accuracy versus epoch, loss versus epoch and validation versus uh, epoch um, and here we are considering only the base model vgg16 vgg19 and mobile net and our objective is to find the model with maximum accuracy and minimum loss so from all these four graphs it's easily visible that mobile net is the best one uh, and mobile net here being the red curve 
So yeah, we have maximum accuracy and minimum loss in all the four graphs for the mobile net architecture. So yeah, that's why I selected mobile net and now we'll be studying the learning curves for the different mobile net architectures um, with and without fine tuning. So yeah, so these were the graphs plotted and it's not really um, easily interpretable. Like all the models have a similar performance. So yeah, now, yeah, so these are just the uh, zoomed in versions of the pre uh, previously shown graphs and yeah, it's not that interpretable. So uh, let's take a look at an old clip that from 2020 uh, where I explain how I selected the best classification model. So this is how I figured out the optimum model. I uh, drew a scatter plot of test loss versus test accuracy. Uh, all these parameters were saved to my Google Drive during training of the models. So like each model took about two hours to train. Uh, uh, so yeah, so this scatter plot contains the, our base model VGG16, VGG19 and MobileNet without fine tuning. So the optimum model should come uh, to the bottom right hand corner as we need the text accuracy to be maximum and the test loss, test loss to be minimum. So yeah, we can consider our mobile net ar architecture to be optimum among these. Uh, so let's go with fine tuning. Yeah, so except for the fine tuning with one layer, uh, all the other mobile net architectures have uh, considerably similar uh, data points. So let's just uh, remove the fine tuning with one layer model so that we can zoom into here. Now we can observe that uh, the models with fine tuning of five layers and the original mobile net uh, were so let's just eliminate those two and now zooming in uh, we can eliminate the fine tuning with two layers and fine tuning with four layers so yeah now we have uh, reached the end of this project and so the result we can clearly see that uh, the fine tuning model with three layers and the completely fine tuned models uh, mobile net model performs the best the model with fine tuning of three layers has a test loss of order of 10 raised to minus 6 while the completely fine tuned model has a test loss of order of uh, 10 raised to minus 7 and both of them have 100% accuracy but I would consider the model with uh, three layers of fine tuning as better as the completely fine tuned model has a possibility of overfitting.